The stepped concrete buildings of the Queensland Cultural Centre have often been noted as Gibson's iconic stamp on the Brisbane landscape, but if he had gone his way, the entire southern stretch of the Brisbane River may have looked remarkably different to the South Bank we know today. Over the next few minutes, we'll take a look at a brief history of South Bank, Gibson's design principles, the proposed concept for South Bank, and other unrealised projects of Gibson's. Through the remodelling of drawings found in archives both publicly and privately held, we are able to get a glimpse of what Inner Brisbane could have looked like if Robin Gibson's vision was built. First, a brief history. In the 19th century, South Bank was actually the business centre of Brisbane. In an economy where shipping played a big role, South Bank was heavily important. But following the flood in 1893, the CBD moved onto high ground on the North Bank. Since then, the importance of South Bank to Brisbane's landscape diminished greatly. South Bank was left unkempt until the 1970s. The area was reclaimed and began a transformation from industrial district to world-class arts precinct, led by Gibson. This led on to the World Expo in 1988, attracting close to 16 million people and reviving the city. The redevelopment of South Bank post-Expo was heavily lobbied for by the public. After a public competition, South Bank officially opened in June 1992, to great success. Today, approximately 11 million people visit the park every year. The current layout of South Bank is well known by almost every Brisbane resident, so much so that 93% of people said they would bring an out-of-town visitor to South Bank as part of their holiday. The apartment blocks on Little Stanley Street with their restaurants and cafes below, help separate the parklands from hotels and the TAFE at the back. The parklands themselves are seemingly split up into microcosms. Dining options are the Ship Inn and River Quay Precinct, Streets Beach, the Plough Inn and Stanley Street Plaza, the Courier Mail Plaza, and the Brisbane Eye. So let's rewind back to a clean slate. How would a Gibson design South Bank look like? Many of Gibson's designs originally began with a simple mapping of geometric lines across the site. This method is similar to a design approach known as field theory and was established in the mid 20th century by Walter Nitsch, an American architect and one of the partners of the esteemed firm of Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, more commonly known as SOM. Both Nitsch and other members of SOM had come to Brisbane and worked on the State Works building on 80 George Street with Lund Hutton Newell. It revolves around the idea of sites as a field, with geometrical shapes mapping out the elements of the form. Figures grow, rotate and shrink in mathematical proportion to each other. First, a grid is created over the precinct. Then, buildings are aligned to intersections along important routes like Ray Street. A pedestrian zone is created by closing vehicular traffic. Four key buildings step up in height towards the bottom of the river. Their staggered forms reminiscent of the Performing Arts Centre. On the end is a hotel and convention centre. Gibson retains historically key buildings such as the Ship Inn, the All Gas Building and the Plough Inn. Gibson expands the relationship with the river to include workshops, a marina and a boardwalk. A close connection between the people and the river was a highly desirable aspect that Gibson sought. The public space includes a large area for open markets and also symbolises the beginning of Warana Way an open air path that links commercial developments on the lower levels of each block, similar to Little Stanley Street in the current scheme. Sitting above are residential and commercial spaces, their forms a result of Gibson's attention to environmental aspects, such as the winter sun and prevailing breezes. Moving up the river, the blocks decrease in height. Continuing along Warana Way leads to the heritage listed Plough Inn, followed by open landscaping and an amphitheatre, aptly named the River Stage. The Sculpture Garden, a remnant of the expo, remains in front of an eight-storey hotel and convention centre building. A water feature greets the entry, with a large atrium in the middle and community facilities above facing the river. Raised walkways extend over Grey Street, connecting the parklands to stations for a rapid transit system. These buildings also contain commercial spaces, along the street and car parking above. Gibson had also intended to retain World Expo Park. The current scheme is far from unsuccessful, but we can only imagine how different our relationship with the parklands would be if Gibson was chosen to design his utopia for South Bank. Gibson was also brought on to design a concept for a development for Suncorp at North Quay, adjacent to the Treasury Casino. Prior to this, the site held the Prudential Building until 1988. 
Then, in 1992, Suncorp announced their intent to refurbish major buildings, but in 94, on Suncorp owned land, Gibson designed a proposal for the development. The project was made up of several buildings, including a hotel, an office tower, and a building to house the courts. Initially, Gibson's early designs were quite audacious compared to his other commercial attempts. These triangular forms were scrapped later. Facing George Street lies the first building, a Supreme Court building, and an office tower for Suncorp on the corner. Gibson retains the open piazza facing Victoria Bridge, similar to the current scheme. Closer to the river is the entrance to the communal areas, including retail and commercial space, and the hotel, with large amounts of glazing facing the river. Gibson uses the change in level to create a more formal entry for the hotel on the floor below, including a large function room and lobby area. Outside, repetitive columns continue along the front, a common element of Gibson's commercial projects. A nightclub and pool area for the hotel sit at the front with prime vistas over the river. The office tower contains 25 floors of office space. The building expresses a very delineated form of concrete and glass, while the internal spaces contain lots of light and desk space. Levels 3 to 9 contain office spaces with corner offices that open up into these long corridors of open planning, while the layout of the upper floors change a little more to accommodate more corner offices. The current scheme was designed by Denton Corker Marshall. Completed in 2006, it contains 38 floors and houses commercial spaces below, offices above, and the Brisbane City Council Library. It is the largest commercial office building in Australia to be awarded a five-star green rating. In 1989, Gibson had also drawn up plans for a building on the St. Lucia campus of the University of Queensland, situated between two of his buildings, Main Hall and the Social Sciences Library, and in front of the Falk and Smith Building. The project proposed an underground library and gallery space that linked the two adjacent buildings. Raising the entry level created this platform for the main entry towards Falk and Smith. The design created a proscenium up from the street front and through an elongated plaza that culminates at the main entry. The creation of a platform dramatises the symmetrical form of Falk and Smith and plays up the central approach right from the bottom of the hill. Open grass extends over Gibson's proposal, reflecting the landscape of the Great Court on the other side. Internally, the concept is made up of a gallery space and a library. These spaces provide access to Main Hall as well as the Social Sciences Library. Whilst drawings for this concept were limited, elements such as the coffer slab above were a repeated form found in a variety of Gibson's projects, including this Paul Wallace sketch of the Queensland Art Gallery. Sitting below the centralised axis was an auditorium toward the back, and offices on a level above. But what could have been a dramatic transformation for the key point of the university at the time was left unrealised. Gibson's scheme was dropped. The current site contains an open green space in the middle and space for 70 car parks that accommodate for short-term parking. Key transport elements like bus stations and car parks were moved away from the front of Falcon Smith, lessening the powerful act of entering on the Falcon Smith side of the campus. This is just a small sample of the many projects Gibson designed but didn't come to fruition. To say that he had a large influence on the landscape of Brisbane is an understatement, but that also doesn't do justice to the influence Gibson has had on local architects who would go on to impact the character of architecture in Brisbane. Robin's utopia may not have been realised, but his legacy lives on.